Pete Buttigieg was doing a uh, Fox Town Hall. And um, he did so. And I just want to say this. Uh, Pete Buttigieg understands that there is a problem going on a network like Fox. I don't know if he came up with this idea himself. It may have been from pushback when he announced that he was going on. He understands that there was a problem, and so he had to go on there and show his bona fides in terms of calling out that network. Pete Buttigieg has made similar smart moves lately. Uh, he was going to, I guess, go on Dave Rubin's show, and then somehow he found out that uh, Mike Cernovich was going to be on that show, and uh, he decided... Um, not to go on. Now, who could blame him? Um, because, you know, Mike Cernovich is a, a smear artist who, and here, Matt, uh, just put this up, because I'm not sure, not 100% sure how um, Buttigieg, uh, Buttigieg's people found out that um, Cernovich was going on that day. Um, it's, it's hard to know how these things get public. Oh, what's this? this? Is a tweet? Oh, I guess I now I remember. I asked uh, if Pete Buna, uh, Buttigieg knew that um, date rape denier and smear merchant Mike Cernovich was going to be on his show that day. I don't because we heard a rumor that that was the case. It turned out it was, but it wasn't. Um, it's, it's a booking a, thing, Pete. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Do you really want? to accept an invitation to a show right after Mike Cernovich has been on that show and not on that show to be indicted for his work, but rather as a reformation project. I would love to know the backstory of how that happened because some people say Cernovich are working with um, uh, turning points. I don't know if that's true. And I know that Dave Rubin was just at a turning points event Maybe maybe that was just a suggestion. Anyways, let's get back to Pete Buttigieg on uh, Fox News, where he realized, like, you can't go on platforms that are designed to uh, promote some of the uh, worst aspects of society and at the very least not address it. And... Uh, here is Buttigieg doing that. The other thing we've got to do is we've got to find people where they are. You know, a lot of folks in my party were critical of me for even doing this uh, with Fox News. And, and I've, I, I've heard that. <laughs> and, and I get where that's coming from, especially when you see what goes on with some of the opinion hosts on this network. I mean, when you got Tucker Carlson saying that immigrants make America dirty, when you've got uh, Laura Ingram comparing detention centers with children in cages to summer camps, summer camps, then there is a reason why anybody has to swallow hard and think twice before participating in this media ecosystem. But I also believe that even though some of those hosts are not always there in good faith, I think a lot of people tune into this network uh, who do it in good faith. And, and there are a lot of Americans who my party can't blame if they are ignoring our message because they will never hear it if we don't go on and talk about it. And so it's why, whether it's going into uh, the viewership of Fox News or whether geographically it's going into places uh, where Democrats haven't been seen much, I think we've got to find people where they are, not change our values, but update our vocabulary so that we're truly connecting with Americans from coast to coast. Now, I mean, I think, you know, and there's, there's obviously an argument like, well, um, maybe you should also deliver certain material benefits to those people as opposed to messaging. But let's just keep it on the messaging front. The reason why Pete Buttigieg would do Fox and has to throw that in so that he acknowledges on Fox what these people are doing, as opposed to Dave Rubin, is that, look, Dave Rubin, you're not reaching anybody who you couldn't reach through Fox and or through uh, all the other mainstream. Outlets. So there's a fundamental difference there in that calculation. Now, Dave Rubin obviously thinks very highly about his, um, his reach uh, and who he is reaching. And certainly, uh, at least if you believe the numbers on YouTube, now I know there's a lot of people out there who say things like, hey, can't you buy YouTube views? 
I just Googled buy YouTube views and you can buy YouTube views. I don't know if that's the case, um, but let's just assume it's not the case. Let's just assume that YouTube keeps demonetizing Dave Rubin's videos, according to him, for no reason whatsoever. That maybe has nothing to do with having paid views or maybe nothing to do with what those audience members had watched before that tells the algorithm this material might be very, very um, ad unfriendly, even though on its face it doesn't appear to be. Do you follow what I'm saying there? Like, for instance, I'm convinced that the YouTube algorithm knows where our audience has been. Oh, yeah. And if our audience, say, was watching a lot of hate videos and they came and watched my video with Peter uh, Dow, I'm convinced that they would, that Google would automatically demonetize because they can't tell what I'm saying with Peter Dow. They just know that like, if these guys are watching four hate videos a day and they go to watch the fifth video, there's good reason to believe that fifth video might be a little bit dubious. And that seems to work. Now, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm, this is all speculation. Or like point. maybe those are recent changes. And until quite recently, it was like, oh, the fifth hate video. That's excellent. Let's yeah. monetize it. This I don't does know. incredibly well for I don't algorithms. Know. But for some reason, Dave Rubin's stuff gets demonetized a lot if you uh, believe his Twitter feed. But also, according to his Twitter feed, he gives congratulations to Media Matters, Vox, and HuffPo because Pete Buttigieg is passing on our interview. Um, he goes on to say it's a shame because I think he's a decent man and we have some agreement and some disagreement. We could have opened up a whole new audience to him. I don't think there is a whole new audience to him. I don't that's, think so. Uh, a whole voting. new world. But, and, um, and I think that uh, he as a politician has a very good assessment as to whether it would have been a net uh, positive There's or a negative. There's a couple of 19-year-old chronic masturbators <clears throat> who game and think black people are genetically but inferior. But I think it's unfair the whole field. of Dave to... Um, to say, to, to thank Media Matters, Vox, and HuffPo for two reasons. One, it's, it's clearly um, not a function of them just saying, don't do it. It's them saying, like, look who you're having on, Dave. And also, like, to not give me credit, I think is also a little offensive. Now, let me just also dispel one other theory. There were people who have... Uh, who have DM'd me and have uh, emailed me who say that they believe Dave had Mike Cernovich on as a way of telling me to F off because he did it. He booked him right after those series of questions. Why won't you talk to Sam Cedar in public that were videotaped? And there's been some speculation that Mike Cernovich, now I just want to say, that did not work out for you, Dave. I was happy to see what happened, but you made a decision to go for the clicks and maybe there's money in it for you in some fashion or another to have Mike Cernovich on. I mean, because you've had him on before. It's not like Cernovich has done anything new. I don't know what ideas you're talking about with Mike Cernovich. You didn't question him on uh, his role in his biggest failure to date. Uh, which was his work with me. It's interesting that he talked about the James. That he, I, I listened to that full interview, and uh, Ruben talked as if he was going to get into all the things that you've been doing since then. Some are controversial, like trolling. Got deep into the James Gunn thing. Didn't mention the Sam Cedar thing. Yeah, a little weird about that because um, it wasn't like it didn't get written up in the New York Times and the Washington Post. Well, on his Wikipedia, there is a conflict with Sam Cedar section. There's not a conflict with James Gunn section. That's weird. But that's fake news. But, and, uh, uh, I'm more interested in talking about but, ideas. Instead but of Dave, thinking. let me just say this. Sorry about Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> it's a real shame that you don't have me on because maybe we could agree about some stuff. <laughs> Maybe uh, some of your audience would be interested in hearing from me. Oh, no. Agreement. So you don't have to do this whole thing where you 
go and book people who tried to get me fired publicly and then ended up being humiliated. That whole like games play. You can just be straight with me and ask me to come on. Don't if you're be coy. trying to get my attention, mission accomplished. I will come on, Dave. You just have to you just have to say the words. I think if I remind him of his greatest modern professional accomplishment, he'll get the message to not fuck with me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I seem to have miscalculated. A <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Wait, it didn't have its intended effect on Cedar, and now I don't get to talk with Mayor Pete. Oh, no. I lost the battle at the war. Hmm. All right.